things that I like today. There's a clip that went viral yesterday of a Vice panel. So Vice does these panels of various young people talking about politics. And uh, this particular panel was extraordinarily amusing because you can see the woke in action, like in full action. In this particular clip, there's a young Asian man who is talking about how Asians outperform, economically speaking, they have really low crime rates and why that is. And the shock and, and utter kind of disdain that everyone else on the panel has for this person saying perfectly obvious things, it's amazing because they just assume everybody around them is going to agree that it must be some form of white privilege or racism that is to blame for this. Here is, uh, th this clip is an amazing clip. Here we go. Statistically, it is true that Asians, right, on average, make more money, it, like in terms of medium, make more money, better test scores, get into better colleges, all that stuff. I think the question is, why is that? And I don't know if model minority, whatever that label wants That's to That's actually mean. a not, myth because not, we cannot be- um, Well, no, listen, well, let me finish my point. We need to observe what makes people successful and unsuccessful. And I think when you look at trends that are generally true in the Asian community, not of everyone, but are generally true, usually you have families that are sticking together. You have, um, you know, people are taught to work hard in school, not get into trouble. I think that translates to why Asians en masse are successful. And I don't think you have to be Asian or white for that matter to not have kids out of wedlock, not, you know, commit crime, not, not cause trouble, what is whatever happening? it is. It's just a matter of like, well, common sense. That's what makes people successful. I love the faces of the people around him. He's saying perfectly obvious things. There's great social science data to suggest this is the case. That if you wish to be successful in American life, you basically need to do three things. Graduate high school, don't have a baby out of wedlock, get a job. Those are the three things. If you do that, then you will not be permanently poor in the United States. Like we're talking 98% of the time. The, the ladder of success is actually pretty available to most people if you make basic responsible decisions and communities that tend to value education and family and where mom and dad are both present and where a lot of time is spent in school and where people put a lot of focus on studying. Of course, those cultures are going to do better. And that has nothing to do with race. The guy says it has nothing to do with race and all these people are just freaking out. You got purple haired lady who is Asian making the, making the, the I can't believe I'm hearing this face. You have uh, a, a guy who also appears to be uh, maybe Indian or Pakistani who's just freaking out. How, how could someone say, did you just say people shouldn't have, be single parent? You, you said people should get married? Oh my God, oh my God. You have uh, a, another Asian guy sitting next to this Asian guy and he's just he's so uncomfortable, deeply uncomfortable. It, like, amazing, amazing stuff. But again, you are not allowed in the cult, when you're in the cult of racial equity or gender identity, anyone who questions the cult must be treated as though what they're saying is absolute anathema. That it's insane. It's insane to suggest that personal agency has something to do with your success or failure in life. That is the thing that the left can't stand more than anything else. And that is where, you know, you wonder where wokeism crosses streams with the rest of the left-wing agenda. I mean, the answer is that the entire basis of wokeism springs from a sort of Marxist theory, which is that people are not responsible for their own decisions, that all failures in your life are due to some sort of evil capitalist or traditionalist mindset that has been imbued throughout society. And if you obliterate those structures, then everybody will finally be equal. Everybody will bloom anew. That is where they cross streams, is, is lack of personal responsibility and blaming society for all of your problems. That's really where, where the, the, the commonality lies. Whenever anyone suggests that personal responsibility is the answer to 92% of all of your problems in life, 92% is a low-end estimate, man, that the vast majority of your problems are solvable by you. If we're not talking about a debilitating health crisis, if you're a sentient human, the vast majority of your own problems are solvable by you. First of all, the fact that there are people out there who find that enervating is shocking to me. That should be the most energizing idea ever. It's saying that you can actually succeed if you take your life in hand. That is a much better outlook on life than society is victimizing me. And you see that guy over there who's having a bad life? It's probably because society is victimizing him as well. You can have sympathy for your fellow human being to give them a hand up or, or help them out, and give charity, give people jobs and do all those things. And that's a good thing to do. But the reality is that the person won't take the job because they're busy complaining about how society is victimizing them. Well, there's not much you can do about that. When you have a person saying common sense things and everybody reacting like this, it is an indicator of where we are going as a society. So good for this guy on this vice panel. And I have to say the reactions are absolutely hilarious. When you watch this clip and you see all the people around this level-headed Asian person 
know, wanting to die because he's saying true things. Just remember, we all will die. And this is why you need life insurance. I know that's a dark transition, but it happens to be the case. If you're a responsible human being, you need to make sure that, God forbid, something happens to you. You're walking down the street and Acme Anvil flies out of a third story window and just conks you on the head. And unlike Wiley e. Coyote, you're not temporarily damaged. You're, you're actually bleeding out on the pavement. As that happens, you're going to think back to that time you listened to this ad and you didn't get life insurance unless you head on over to policygenius.com. Policy Genius makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from top companies and find your very lowest price. With Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just 39 bucks per month for $2 million in coverage. Some options offer coverage in as little as a week and avoid those unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius is licensed agents. They can help you find coverage options in as little as a week. They work for you, not the insurance companies, which means they don't actually have an incentive to recommend one insurer over another. You can trust their guidance. Your loved ones deserve that financial safety net, and you deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head on over to policygenius.com slash Shapiro or click the link in the description. Get your free life insurance quotes. See how much you could save today. That's policygenius.com slash Shapiro. Protect yourself, protect your family against the vicissitudes of life with the life insurance you need. Head on over to policygenius.com slash Shapiro to get started again. That's policygenius.com slash Shapiro. Click the link in the description. Get your free life insurance quotes to see how much you could save. All these people in this Vice video, believe it or not, they're employed. Well, if you're one of their employers and you wish to upgrade the people who work for you, you probably should check out Zip Recruiter. Zip Recruiter allows you to help find the right person for your role using its magical matching technology. Right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash DailyWire. Zip Recruiter uses powerful technology to find the right candidates for your job. If you see a candidate you like, you can easily send them that personal invite so they are more likely to apply. And if you're really looking to catch somebody's eye, ZipRecruiter offers attention-grabbing labels that speak to job flexibility like urgent or remote. Find candidates you're crazy about with Zip Recruiter. Four out of five employers who post on Zip Recruiter get a quality candidate within day one. See for yourself. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. Try Zip Recruiter for free. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash D-A-I-L-Y-W-I-R-E. ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire. Zip Recruiter is indeed the smartest way to hire. We've been using it here at Daily Wire for years to upgrade our employment base. You should do the same. Head on over to ZipRecruiter.com slash Daily Wire to get started. You can try Zip Recruiter for free again at ZipRecruiter.com slash D-A-I-L-Y-W-I-R-E. Which brings us to a quick thing that I hate. So speaking of systems that actually are failing people, the president of the United States declared in his State of the Union address earlier this week that he would like to see two additional years of education tacked on to the 12 years that we already have, or 13 years K through 12. Um, there's only one problem with that, which is that our schools are already failing. According to Fox Baltimore, after Fox 45's Project Baltimore report uncovered 23 schools in Baltimore City had zero students, zero, 23 schools, zero students who tested proficient in math. Some leaders representing the city aren't talking about the problem. The Maryland State Department of Education recently released the 2022 state test results known as MCAP, that's the Maryland Comprehensive Assessment Program. Baltimore City's math scores were the lowest in the state. 7% of third through eighth graders tested proficient in math. 7%, 93% of students could not do math at grade level. Project Baltimore analyzed the test results, found 23 schools, including elementary, middle, and high schools, that didn't have one student performing at grade level. There were another 20 schools that had only one or two students testing proficient in math. The alarming test results underscored the concern for student achievement in Baltimore City. Fox 45 News and Project Baltimore sent questions to the city council and Baltimore City delegation in Annapolis demanding answers as to who should be held responsible, and pretty much nobody responded which is not, of course, a shock because you have to keep dumping money into the failing system and you can never you can never claim the other possibility, which is that maybe parenting strategies in the city of Baltimore are failing because a huge percentage of families in the city of Baltimore are led by non-two-parent families. And that is a problem, as it turns out. That lack of education and lack of focus on education in the home is a serious, serious issue. And that bleeds over into school no matter how much money you dump into the schools. Plus, the schools themselves are failing. This ties into the whole lack of, of personal responsibility, lack of agency that our society propagates. And, the, and then we blame ghosts in the machine, like systemic racism for failures in Baltimore, which again, is a largely black city in which nearly all the public officials are black and in which the failures just continue. That is not systemic racism at work. That is bad decision-making. And it is, it is a lack of focus on the things that actually should matter to kids, both in the home and in the institutions. Speaking of lack of personal responsibility, and attempts to blame global forces for individual decision-making. Another terrorist attack over in Israel today. A six-year-old child and a man in his 20s were killed. Five others were injured in a terrorist ramming attack near the remote neighborhood of Jerusalem on Friday afternoon. The terrorist identified 
as Hossein Karaka, a 31-year-old resident of East Jerusalem, rammed into a bus stop at the entrance of the remote neighborhood. He just drove his bus, direct, he drove his car directly into a bus stop. A Facebook account reportedly belonging to, a, to the terrorist posted a series of posts in recent months glorifying both Hezbollah, which is a Lebanese terror group that has presence in, uh, in the Palestinian areas, and Palestinian terrorists, including a post calling a terrorist who conducted a shooting attack at the Shuafa checkpoint last year a hero. Meanwhile, presumably, any retaliation undertaken by the Israeli government will be condemned by the international community because agency only applies to the people we don't like. It's amazing. If you're on the right, you say agency applies to everybody. Everybody has personal agencies. Don't do evil things. Don't do evil things. The solution to whatever your problems are are not, in fact, ramming a, a truck into a couple of school children at a bus stop. On the left, agency is only something that you apply to your enemies. You have no agency. Your enemy has agency. And so if your enemy retaliates against you, it's because they are bad. They are utilizing their agency to do something to you. And it's through no fault of your own because you didn't have agency. So you don't actually deserve anything that's happening to you. This is the way logic seems to work in the Middle East. You have one side that hands out candies when children are run over by a car. And you have another side that kills terrorists. And the left-wing media in the United States treat the two things as equivalent. Or the Israeli retaliation is significantly worse against terrorists than the actual terror attack carried out against innocent civilians. Alrighty, guys, the rest of the show continues right now. You're not going to want to miss it. We'll get into your questions in the mailbag. Remember, you have to be a subscriber in order to get your question answered in the mailbag. Become a member. Use Code Shapiro at checkout for two months free on all annual plans. Click the link in the description and join us. 